Welcome back. It's still The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Now, following Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the follow on economic sanctions imposed on Moscow by Western powers, crude oil prices extended higher during Tuesday's midday session, hovering at fresh seven year highs. Now, the West Texas Intermediate, which is another benchmark uh, used by oil market representing oil produced in the US, traded above 96 barrel. And then Brent uh, went above $99. Barrow. As the conflict in Ukraine continues, experts say several African states could stand to benefit from rising oil prices as many countries look to develop their burgeoning oil sectors. Now, since Russia invaded Ukraine last week, oil prices have soared, reaching levels previously only speculated about, passing the $100 per barrel. Mark. The Brent crude benchmark has been steadily climbing from the beginning of the year and achieved almost $101 earlier this week. With Russia contributing between 25 to 30 percent of the world's oil supply, experts are worried about a potential shortage should other state impose sanctions on Russia. To help us get a better sense of these developments, uh, let's welcome uh, Nupeng uh, Southwest Zone Chairman Tayo Abueji. Many thanks for joining us on the breakfast in Plus TV Africa. Good morning. Yeah, good morning to you. Nice Tayo. Yeah, it is a pleasure. Let's talk about uh, you know the importance and implications of all of this on Nigeria specifically. Now you. Russia has been sanctioned. Um, don't you think uh, Nigeria has a bit of an opportunity now to utilize this uh, particular opening and get a windfall as regards uh, the prices? As of yesterday, it sold at about $105. What do you really think uh, are the benefits for Nigeria? Well, if we have been uh, in a situation in which Nigeria are producing and refining our products locally, mm. I think we should be you should be happy that the price is going up. But unfortunately for Nigeria, if the price is going up, instead of us to celebrate, for the fact, for the fact that we are not exporting our crude oil and bring the, the refined products, the, 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 the gap between the cost price and the one we are bringing into Nigeria unified all the, all the profit we're supposed to make. So Nigeria does not benefit anything. Due to the fact we are using that uh, profit we're supposed to have to subsidize the, pro the one we are taking in. So, Nigeria, we don't have any cost to celebrate the high in price. So, in all of this right now, you say it is not yet Uhuru for the downstream sector in Nigeria. You know, one would have thought that uh, with all of this um, playing out, that um, there should be some sort of a leeway for Nigeria. You talked about um, subsidy. So, invariably, you're saying that subsidy has, um, you know, has uh, in so many ways um, affected um, all of the you know, revenues that should be occurring into the coffers of, uh, of Nigeria. Yes, the subsidy that wipe out all the profits is supposed to be. And uh, just as you said, there is no rule for Nigeria about it. Even the government confirmed that the act in price does not benefit Nigeria. Okay, but still looking at this right now, you know, fine. Even if Nigeria, you know, cannot really um, get some um, the utmost uh, from all of this because of uh, our internal challenge, let's talk about the continent, for instance. Uh, now, how do we begin to push um, the continent forward? Because I feel that uh, it is an opportunity, you know, that we could, um, as Africans, um, gain from all of this um, conflict. I would say we, we should talk about uh, your your country before you move into other. Uh, I mean, the, the continent. Let's ask ourselves: How can we make advantage of this kind of a uh, situation? As in Nigeria, then you are able to balance balance that up. Now think of the continent. As of today, Nigeria is not making anything, or we are, there is no profit. There is nothing, any advantage that is this situation has accrued to Nigeria. So if you cannot get, I mean, you cannot be in a situation where we make our country better, we shouldn't be talking of the continent. 
Okay, so but let's look at it in another way right now. So as at yesterday, you know, uh, the West Texas Intermediate uh, went above um, um, $100. Uh, what do we see playing out in the next uh, coming days? Do you see uh, fuel hovering at that particular, you know, price? Would each drop or would it even increase further? Depend, depend on the situation in, uh, uh, in Russia and Ukraine. If tomorrow there is ceasefire, Russia decides us to uh, bombard Ukraine again, the price, there may be a fair price. The price will likely come down. But as long as the war continues, all the, uh, the other countries will be speculating. They may not know that they will not know what is happening or it will, it will happen in the next few weeks. So they want to stock, uh, get some stock, and that will, the, the demand for the product will make the price higher. Okay. Um, um, Mr. Tayo, the, the argument here, I totally understand the fact that uh, if you look at the logic, because this is the argument that's actually going on right now, that the conflicts that we currently have in Ukraine and uh, Russia would be very beneficial to Africa and for all countries that are actually producing oil. You won't talk about Nigeria and Gola, among others. Now, um, if you also look at it, we also have a huge challenge of I mean, earnings and not meeting our quota uh, production uh, by OPEC. So one would rather think, we understand that even if we are able to meet the quota projection, uh, we're looking at uh, 1.46 trillion barrel, uh, if I'm not mistaken, if there's something to go by, as against what we're producing, which is actually, I mean, that's the actual that we should be meeting, 1.63 trillion, uh, and currently we're not meeting that particular target. Now. Um, one would think that the, the fact that we are even able to export, if we're able to meet the quota production, if we're able to even meet it, that means would actually make a lot of uh, you know, foreign exchange that would actually help us you know, with funding of our budget. Uh, not forgetting the fact that even the subsidy, we're still looking for money, even the budget itself you know, to fund the entire budget, we still do not have. I don't think it's a lose-lose situation at the end of the day. It might just not be you know, a total loss for us in Nigeria. Yes, we understand that we do not have the capacity to refine our product, but not necessarily you know, a loss. I, I still, still see that there might just be you know, um, a little bit of hope and light in there for us you know, to, to take advantage of the situation as a country. I didn't see the hope at all. If you know the amount of um, uh, the, the amount of foreign exchange that is going for subsidy, I didn't see the hope at all. We are not making any profits, except the government probably uh, the hike the price. But as at now, we are not making any profit. So there's no gain that the price is surging up and Nigeria is making anything. So, so, so how about the situation of we taking a big because this is actually a market for us. Uh, don't, don't you see, you know, the Nigerian government taking advantage of some of these illegal refineries that we have, trying to uh, maybe probably give license and trying to see how they meet up, you know, international be best practice? Because we already have illegal refineries. Rather than destroy them, find out how to improve on them and make them work. And so we can actually maybe refine some of our product and don't have to export. So we can actually end. Uh, you know, within this period of the crisis or the conflict that's ongoing in Russia and Ukraine? I'm trying to be positive here. Yeah. I don't know why you are referring <laughs> to as illegal refinery. So they are illegal refineries. Yeah. My point here is well, the government is claiming that as a yesterday. So, so, so there are some people who think that rather than the government crashing these illegal refineries, they can decide to improve on them and, uh, you know, get it working. And then we can also, you know, uh, refine our products. That's also another means. Because you are saying that the reason why we will not cash out at this period in time as a country and as a continent, mostly if we're unable, we don't have the capacity to refine our product. And so it doesn't make any sense at the end of the end, the fact that we have to spend on subsidy. So I'm saying that if we look inwards and we find out that, yes, we have illegal refineries that are in different parts of the country, rather than destroy them, we find a way to make them, uh, you know, functional, meeting best practice, and what yeah, have you. Right. Then maybe we can take advantage of the situation. Well, just as like I told you, I don't know what you guys are legally right, but the, uh, the way out of it, I will implore the government to those who want to revert to as legally to legalize them. 
to make use of their they make use of their intelligence and every other thing that will that will make them illegal. I mean, that will make them uh, the, uh, the 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 legal part of the uh, the system. Those right. of, of, of recent, you know what is happening in Port Harcourt. That those are the that the, the, the legal are being chased away by the United uh, States government. All right, thank you However, so much, Tayo. In the, okay. All right, um, indeed. Are you agree? Uh, no, the one, I want to say a big thank you for all of your comments um, concerning the issue of um, the oil price at uh, the international market and, of course, the issue of um, illegal refineries. We do appreciate your time, but that's as much as we can take um, for time's sake. Thank you so much for your, your, your comment and, of course, your inputs this morning. We do appreciate them. Well, uh, thank you so much. We do appreciate it, and that's the much we can actually take at this point in time. Uh, it's been an amazing conversation. Yes, we'll definitely has. return tomorrow. If you missed out on any part of it, it's okay to join us. Uh, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. On YouTube, that's if you subscribe. I am Messi Bopo. Have a fantastic day. And I'm Justin Academy. Many thanks for being a part of the show. Return again, rise and early, bright and early. These are tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Bye for now.